Hey everybody, welcome to the Warhammer Quest Battle Report. I'm back with the adventurers led by Astro the Fantastic, that old drunk. Uh, we've got Hawk, uh, we've got Wolfric the Barbarian, who are some of the OG heroes. And then finally, we're reintroducing the elf as Orlando the Elf. Um, he's going to rejoin the party at level 1 and try and make the elf work for whatever reason. The elf just seems to die in my campaigns. So we're going give to give it another go um, and have another adventure in the classic Throwback Thursday Warhammer quest. So show the table, show the heroes, and get this underway. And so here's the party ready for adventure. There's Astro the Fantastic, level two. He's got shield freeze and healing hands as his spells, as well as some darting steel daggers for a weapon, and sorcerer blade two for plus one to hit, and the sword of resilience for plus one toughness. He's got an investment. He gets to roll a d6 on every game. Uh, Hawk at level two is my pit fighter. He's escaped from his uh, previous owner. Um, and he's got a heal potion, some bandages, a fist spike, pit armor, a battle axe, plus two strength, but no shield. And then a knee spike for a bonus um, plus one strength, plus two attack, attack. And then the gem of life, which means he can never die. And the armor of fortune. The armor of fortune takes 30 wounds, after which it explodes and automatically downs my warrior. But what's cool is because of his gem of life, that doesn't matter. So if he takes 30 wounds, he just goes back to the beginning. Wolfric, he's battle level three. He's got his berserk. Uh, six cents. He has a five plus like event trigger uh, warning. Pig fat. Uh, once per game, an attack misses automatically, and he can run. On a five plus, he can double his move, but no pin checks either. Um, he's got his um, Graymar of Eshkelon, so he's minus d6 wounds caused, but if you're a one, it breaks. Then his Lifestone, which will also keep him alive forever. Um, once per game, it just resurrects him. So he, well, it's not, it's not resurrects him. He just comes back to life once per game. Um, a Death Sword, which is Strength 10 once per game, uh, Lightning Fire Ring once per game, does 5d6 wounds to one target, and then he's also got a uh, single reroll from his previous event. And a Blade of Striking, I think? Plus one hit. So we're going to the Elf, he's got a Heal Potion, then a Sword and a Bow, and that's it, because he's an Elf. Let's see where we're going adventuring, we'll cut the deck, and our objective room is... The Fire Chasm! A deep red light seeps from this room. And then we have to roll in the adventure book and see what adventure we are participating in in the Fire Chasm. It is Destroy the Warpstone Icon. Rumors about a powerful, long-lost Skaven artifact that have been rediscovered in the old world, uh, the world's edge mountains. The artifact is a skull-shaped icon made from raw warpstone, and the mutating powers are said to be beyond imagination. The icon must be destroyed at all costs to stop the Skaven reclaiming it. Unfortunately, the only way to destroy it is to hurl it into the cleansing flames of the Fire Chasm. The first dungeon room that the warriors enter contains a sturdy iron casket holding the icon. When the warriors have completed the room's event, keep the dungeon room card next to the leader's adventure casket to uh, remind yourself you have it. Um, and then Fire Chasm, when the warriors reach the Fire Chasm, they must overcome the defenders of the chamber and hurl the Warpstone Icon into the flames. Determine the monsters that are guarding the Fire Chasm, roll on their objective or monster table, and the if the Icon is thrown into the Chasm, it is instantly consumed with a roar of lurid green flames that refuses to collapse, and the warriors must get out straight away or be crushed. And escape two turns after killing all the monsters and hurling the Icon into the chamber, then after this point, the whole room caves in, killing any warriors still inside. Each warrior who escapes the dungeon is rewarded with D6 times 100 gold. The dungeon deck is created, and the entryway is uh, the guard room. The dim light of your lantern illuminates what appears to be a floor covered in a checkered board pattern. Sure does seem like Astro has spent another night in jail and we have now busted him out. So with the guard room placed, it is turn one power phase. Astro, you've got six power, of course, in the first turn, which we then skip and go right to exploration. The one time that I get six power this game. Uh, the circle of power, shards of flickering, unnatural green light pierce the darkness from within this room, and it always triggers an event. Well, I guess that we've, uh, blended ourselves in wizard jail, Astro, that would make sense. Hawk the casket, um, obviously this is, you know, wizard jail where Astro is caught stealing something. As the leader Wolfric goes first, he will move his one, two, three, four, there. Uh, then, um, Orlando the elf will go one, two, three... Four. Uh, Hawk gets to go. One, two, three, four, F four, and then finally the wizard. One, two, three, four. It's our event. Goblin archers. Sorry, we should roll power again. We didn't get ambushed. We only have three, and six goblin archers appear. Lee, as far as possible from um, us means in the room we just vacated. I mean, maybe they just dropped from the ceiling or, or came out of those barrels. See who gets a bonus goblin. Everybody gets one. The bonus goblin, oh sorry, the dwarf will count as hawk this game. 
goes to uh, Wolfric, and then the second bonus one goes to the Wizard Astro. Three power with which to do things, and unfortunately we're kind of facing the wrong way. So let's go have Hawk go do what Hawk do. He's going to, mm, I mean, Astro could actually just go nuke all those guys too, if he's feeling brave. Let's see how, uh, how well Hawk does. He's gonna go one, two, Technically, Wolfric goes first. He's just gonna see if he barbarians. No, and then he's gonna freak out and just stand there because he doesn't have a gun. Technically, I guess you would go next. You'll take a step and then you'll shoot your bow at that goblin on a four plus. You hit, and then D6 plus three is a four. Already, already failing to kill a goblin. It has one left. Hawk can go because he's before Astro. Uh, he'll use his sweet, sweet battle axe. Axe hitting on threes, both hit, uh, just kills this one, and then death blow into the next one, hits and can't help but kill him. Up Hawk. Uh, then I guess we go with Astro, and he's just gonna go one, two, three. He'll use two power, seven, and then the three power off the power dice to fuel his freeze spell. And let's see how many, go if I roll four, four goblins take four wounds and they all die. I roll one, one goblin takes one wound and doesn't even die. He's still hung over, clearly. You've all failed terribly. So now the goblins go, we kill the two loose ones, so everybody gets one shot. So four plus at Astro, hits. He's toughness four because of his uh, sword, which means he's taking eight minus four is four wounds. He left, well the goblin's doing great. Goblin into Wolfric, hits. <gasps> oh my God, a nine, his toughness is four. So he'll take, of his 30 now, he's gonna take five wounds. He's this for his big armor dial. He's sitting on five right now out of the possible 30 that it's absorbed. Uh, into Wolfric, misses, into the elf. This is convenient. All right. Well, uh, exploration phase. I guess we explore, uh, or we could just wait. Let's just wait. <laughs> yeah, we got five. Sweet. Okay. So we can cast these anytime, which means Astro's just going to cast the Starlet's Room before anybody else goes. And now it's a four plus. Yay! We kill them all. Blam! Encounter over. Astro gets eighty gold, and Wolfer gets forty. Do we get something cool from the treasures? Six is gonna be an item. What item do we find? Uh, this dial be high. 36. 36 is going to be a potion of invisibility. 200 gold and last one turn. Can't be attacked. He can fight as normal, but can't cast spells. We, we opted not to explore. Actually, now this turn we could explore because we killed everybody, but these guys get to move first. Um, because the turn, that, he nuked them at the beginning of the turn, which means it would be you, you do nothing, you, you do nothing, your initiative force, so you're gonna go stand over here, your initiative three, and now we explore. And what do we find? The dungeon deck says, of course a corridor, as is tradition. We're locked in jail, power phase, whoa, six power, whenever we don't need it. Uh, Wolfric as leader is gonna go one, two, three, four, you can go stack in next to him. And then Hawk will go behind you, and Astro will go behind you. Power phase, four, no ambush just yet. Vaughn moving, one, two. Uh, you can stand in front, one. And then Hawk initiative four will be over here, and Astro last in behind. Exploration again, what do we find? Top card says, another passageway, fabulous. Do we get ambushed? Nope, six power. Whenever we don't need it, we're gonna walk four. In behind, oh sorry, I should be the elf next, then then Hawk, and then finally Astro. Another power phase, and now we get ambushed. What appears a wandering D6 plus one gas warriors. <laughs> How many is that? Two, the plus one. The warrior doesn't get a chaos warrior. It'll be the wizard, fantastic. Everybody else has one just randomly appear. We'll definitely fight this turn. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Astro, you've got one. These guys have 12 wounds each, and their armor, I believe, two. Well, let's start with, I guess, Wolfric. He does he freak out, first of all. He does, so extra attack. He's in his sword of stone, makes him toughness seven. Uh, so he's got three attacks right now. It's only weapon skill four, though, so hitting on fours against his Chaos Warrior. Two hits. Strength four minus, so it's minus six, effectively, for the armor. So ones and twos do no damage. So no damage and one wound. So that guy's got 11 wounds left. That could have been better. Um, then we'll go with Hawk. He will use, his, oh sorry, five plus, he gets to get a free moving attack. He does, so he's gonna get to go twice actually because of his sixth sense. Uh, and so, oh, sorry, that was, um, that was actually the Barbarian. Hawk gets it as well from his fighting pit thing. He gets it too. He gets to move twice. He would get to see the event card with sixth sense. 
his didn't really do anything, but Hawk's effectively gonna get to fight twice. So let's just do that. Uh, we could use our fist spike for four attacks, no death blow. He's only strength three though is the problem. Or we could do battle axe and be strength five. Battle axe, so two attacks with the battle axe. First, first round basically, hits twice. Uh, so these are minus one effectively, because he's strength five for the armor. Ugh, two damage. Those are the attacks that would have gone off before actually even Wolfric attacked. So now his second actual swing, because he's uh, actually it'll be the elf next. So the elf will go. Uh, he'll just use a sword, I guess, to hit. Hits uh, on fours, and then minus six. So five, zero damage. And now Hawk would go with his actual attacks at initiative four. On fours, hit once. On strength five with the battle axe. Four damage, so he's taking six overall. What's been six left? It's Astro, he's got one power to work with here. That's seven in the tank, so he's gonna drop down to three. And I think do a freeze. And let's see if we can hit these guys for a bunch of health. Or do we just save it? No, we just save that one. We're not gonna cast, we're gonna try and hit with our daggers. It's actually just auto hit, but they're only, actually they don't do anything. It's only D6 damage. He's uh, in Sorcerer Blade, and, or sort of Resistance actually, and hit. He does, minus six, no, no damage. Now the Chaos Warriors attacks, one against Wolfric, on four, or threes actually, and then strength four against his toughness of seven, uh, no damage. The one against the Elf, hits not at all. One against Wolfric, also on threes, hits once, uh, he's tough as four. So that's gonna be seven, three damage for the armor. The armor's gonna jump up to eight. Could have been worse, next power phase. Three, okay. Uh, the Barbarian freak out. He does not, roll one. Uh, and then he gets to go first. He attacks again into the Chaos Warrior in front of him. Hits once on a four. Uh, strength four, so minus six. That's a nine, three damage. So he goes from 11 left to eight left. The elf will also attack the wounded one. Misses. That's gonna be Hawk's turn. He gets two battle axe attacks into that Chaos Warrior on fours. One hit. Five with his battle axe, so minus one to this for damage. That's gonna be three, which will take him down to three wounds left. Astro will bop him with his Sword of Toughness and hit. <laughs> no damage. He'll burn some, he's got three power. He'll burn two down to five for a freeze. And let's see if he can kill somebody. So six guys take six wounds. That's just gonna kill him, which Astro will get. And then he'll go down to two. And then he'll go down to six. Astro, you dirty kill stealer. <laughs> And they attack. So two attacks from uh, this Chaos Warrior into Wolfric. Both miss. Six into Orlando from that Chaos Warrior. One hit. And then on a six, it's just dodged. Nope. Four versus toughest three. Uh, that'll be a seven. So he'll take four damage. And he had 11. He's down to seven. All right, new round. Power phase. There we go. Let's just do another freeze. The experience Astro. Three guys take three damage. So this guy's going to die too. And then down to... One left. Wolfric freak out. Nope. And then two attacks against him with his sword. One hit. We minus two to this roll. Kills him. And Wolfric gets that one. But that does mean we have another turn of potentially being ambushed. So, Elf. Uh, sorry. And then Hawk. And then Wizard. Hawk should just stand here. And then Wizard. Get ambushed again. Uh, four. Oh, sorry, we need to do treasure cards and stuff. Uh, so that's 480 and 240 for gold. My goodies was it? Two. That's just going to be a treasure card again. And this time it'll be a healing salve. Uh, restores 2d6 wounds in a single warrior or d6 to two different warriors. Let's give it to Hawk. Four here. So we're just going to cast healing hands uh, to have everybody heal one. So heal up to eight. He'll heal to 15. I should do it twice, and he could heal to 9, and he could heal to 16. Exploration phase, what's up next? A monster's lair. Well, that's always going to be an event. Barbarian's sixth sense, tell us what it is. It does not. His fourth sense is the only thing that's actually engaged right now. So one, two, three, four. Uh, elf. Mm, barbarian. Or sorry, a pit fighter, and then wizard. Oh, jeez. Terrible thing is in here. It'll be just D3 Minotaurs, no big deal. I mean, it is a monster's lair. That, uh, that is thematically appropriate. Just one lucky fellow gets to fight that. Let's say this guy, that pog, the dwarf, so Hawk. Well, let's put him right here so he can be friends with the barbarian too. Speaking of which, Wolfric turns around and says, hey, 
Hey, that's my guy. Freak out. He does not. He'll do two attacks with his sort of stone. Hit on fours. Both hit. Basically just 2d6 straight damage because he's strength four. Eight damage out of 15. So he's got seven left. Well, it's Elfo's time. Roll to see what the power phase was this turn. It was three. Uh, we'll shoot an arrow. And miss. Your check first, plus level for Barbarian. He doesn't care. For Hawk, he doesn't care. Uh, for the Elf, actually, he might care on a 4+. plus. No, he doesn't care. And Astro, doesn't care. Fear is overcome. It's Hawk's turn. Uh, he's going to make some stabs on a 4 with his Battle Axe. Two hits. Uh, 2d6 plus 1 each. Yeah, 12. That'll that'll definitely kill that guy. And it goes to Hawk. 140 gold. So that means Astro's is going to move. 1, 2. And then spend 2. To cast healing hands, everybody regains one. 17, Hawk will go to eight. Or sorry, 10 actually. Not even Hawk, that's Orlando. Hawk is just absorbing damage with his armor. Ash, you idiot. Uh, and we get to explore. So where are we going to? Oh, sorry, we need to see if we get an item. What kind of thing do we find? Four, it's gonna be a magic weapon or armor. This die will be high. 32. 32 is... A magical quiver. Any arrows or crossbows may immediately become enchanted. So they affect monsters with a magic weapon. So we'll just give it to the elf. Yeah, 25 gold, but long term, that's a really cool item. Uh, just for fighting ghosts and stuff. And the torture chamber is next. Oh. Barbarian, can you sniff out what's inside? No, the worst. Well, uh, power phase for the new turn. No ambush. We got lots of power, so we'll walk in. One, two, three, four. So the elf will be next, actually. One, two, three, four. And then hawk, one, two, three. Or four actually, and then it would have been Astral Astak. What do we find? Event phase. The portcullis! Oh no, it slams shut. I'm using the quest book, that means we're gonna roll, and high dice will be that one again. 44 for the event. It's a portcullis! Hilariously, once all we've entered, it, it's the exact same thing we drew. That's hilarious. Now, luckily, in this mission, we can get out uh, through the actual objective room, so we don't have to find the key. We do draw another event card immediately, and it's 2d6 giant spiders. How many giant spiders? Ten! Ugh. Somebody else, somebody, two guys are getting, uh... So it'd be eight, nine, ten, so two people get two extras. Let's look at the elf and the wizard. Three, which means they'll wrap around that way, and these guys are getting two each. Alright, well, let's see if we can do a full round robin with the, uh, barbarian. That'd be cool. So we'll start off with the barbarian. He's gonna attack this spider and try and go in a big circle. You freak out. No. Uh, so two attacks with a sort of stone. Actually, does he even bother? Sort of. He likes the sort of stone. So two hits on threes. One hit. Uh, he just squishes one. Next one. Three plus. Kills it. Next one. Three plus. Kills it. That's three. Fourth one. Kills it. Fifth one. Misses. So the fifth one will live. It's not enough. He just, he just auto kills it if he rolls a hit. If he gets to go, he's going to try and emulate the barbarian. Three plus to hit this one. Weapon skill three against weapon skill two. So threes. Hits, it should just kill it, toughness two. Yeah, so he just automatically kills it, only has one wound. So the next one, death blow, hits, kills it. Last one, hits, kills it. Good job, elf. Uh, then it's Hawk. I guess he just battle axes that thing. It's dead. And then the wizard, hit it. Actually, you just do darting steel daggers and hit it twice. It dies. One of them tries to web Wolfric. He hits. Uh, does he just auto do it? He's web, but at the end of the turn on a three plus, he just breaks out. No. We'll use our power roll to nuke one spider for one. That'll kill him. He's still webbed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can still explore, uh, but we'll have to break out of our webbing. So end of the turn, it's a T-junction. What cool treasure did we get from the spiders? Two is just gonna be a treasure card. That's gonna be a magic potion. Uh, it's a surprise potion. We'll give it to, oh, I don't know. Let's say Astra. All right, well, the deck is split. Does Wolfric break out? He does, so he has to actually move. Oh, power phase first. Don't get ambushed. Um, so we're just gonna spend two right now to do another healing hands. So that'll fully heal both Hawk and um, Orlando. And then we'll go. One, two, three, four, just by virtue of the fact that this is leading off the table. Uh, Orlando is gonna go and go one, two, three, four. Hawk goes one, two, three, four. And then Astro, one, Two. New power, sorry, explore and then new power phase. What do we see in the next room? Oh, sorry, no, it's not, uh, six sense is only when the room's been drawn, actually. We explore first. Oh, that looks like the fire castle. That's convenient. So what's guarding this uh, objective room? So we can throw this thing in. Four. 
Four in the adventure book says... Six orcs, six orc archers, and six night goblin archers. Shot like crazy. Didn't get to see that yet from Sixth Sense. I did actually, hooray! So I shouldn't have actually rolled that until I was in the room, but Sixth Sense let me do it. it feels a lot less like Sixth Sense than it does. Uh, hey look, there's a lot of guys in that room. <laughs> so let's go with Wolfric. He's gonna go one, two, and try and cross the chasm. To the other side before those guys get placed. I think so. Yeah, three to six, he makes it across. And it costs two squares of movement, so he's, he's all good. So hooray, he jumps over there. Uh, then it's Orlando, one, two, three, four. Uh, Hawk, one, two, three, four. And then Astro, one, two, three, four. Let's kick it off, six orcs. <laughs> Do we just place them? Well, sorry, somebody gets two, because that's, that's how this goes. Or sorry, two people get two. Uh, and that'll be Wolfric and the Wizard. Each gonna get two orcs versus one for everybody else. And who gets two extra orc archers? It's... Uh, Hawk and the Barbarian. That'll be th uh, two for Hawk and one for Astro over here, and then one for the Elf, and, sorry, two for Wolfric and one for the Elf on this side. Who gets bonus goblins? It's the Wizard and the Barbarian. Right, well, this is gonna be a rich full game. Uh, and let's see what the power phase is for the new turret. Power phase, give us a good number. Yeah, well, let's just do it. We're gonna have Astro go and crank a free spell. How many take how many wounds? Four take four wounds. We're just gonna use that to clear out orc archers because they're gonna be a giant pain to get otherwise. So one, two, three, and then just like a random orc that's fighting Astro, I think. Four. More power. So then the Barbarian Wolf forgets to go. Does he freak out? Nope. Attacks this sort of stone into the left mouse orc. Uh, one hit, strength four. Kills him. Death blow into the next one, three plus. Hits. And the toughness four, so just straight dice, three plus to kill him. Yeah, kills him too. Uh, next highest initiative will be the elf. He's gonna fight over here on a four, miss. And then it's Wolfric, or sorry, a Hawk rather. He's gonna go Battle Axe into that one. Both hit, plus one to each of these. So two and four is six. Well though, cause he's not adjacent. So last is Astro. He'll just try and poke with the sword. Hit. Nine kills him. Good job, Astro. The baddies go. It's mostly going to be shooting. There's only one melee attack, and that's going to be one that's into the elf. Does it hit? Nope. Many shots. So, goblin into elf. Misses. Uh, two goblins into wolfric. One hit. Uh, can't even... Uh, sorry, could damage on a six or a five. Doesn't do any damage, though. Uh, two into Astro. Nope. One into Hawk. No. And then two elves into... Or two orcs into Astro. Both hit. Toughness four because of his sword. Uh, so that's a seven, which is three damage, and a six, which is two damage. So five total. is back down to 15 from 18. And then it's a orc against hawk, which misses. All right, new turn. Three power this time. Hi, right, barbarian. It's your new turn. You freak out and do nothing. Fantastic. That's the elf. Can you hit that uh, orc? You cannot. Uh, it'll be hawk. Can he hit that orc? His battle axe? Twice, uh, this just kills him. Plus one. And that's gonna be six and 10 wounds. And that's Astro, we rolled a three, which means we could just take a step and then use two of our power and go down to three and the three that we rolled to blast another freeze. Hey guys, take how many wounds? Five guys take five wounds? Yeah, I'll take that. All the orcs die and two goblins. This is an amazing spell. <laughs> So, racking up the kills yet again, Astro drunkenly staggers through life, um, and it's end of round, so these guys are all going to fight, so two shots into Wolfric, one hit, uh, doesn't do any damage, that's a total of seven, he's toughness seven. This one into Orlando, hits, ooh, that's a nine versus toughness three, six damage, to five left. And this last one into Astro, hits, does a nine versus his toughness of four because of his uh, sword. And that means five damage, so he's down to ten left. Rough. All right, new turn. What happens? Three power. We'll go down to one to blast this guy again. Uh, as long as it's a two plus. We kill. Can you guys clean out the rest? All right, so Wolfric, do you freak out? No. So you take a step. Uh, your plus two right now is only a four. And you'll uh, use your sword on that goblin. You hit him twice. He explodes. Death blow into the next one. Hits. He also explodes. All right, uh, Elfie Elf, can you do it? So move one, spend two squares, gets across, and then three, take a stab with the sword, hits. 
uh, kills him. And then it's just Wolfric. He's going to go one. And then, uh, I guess, try and jump. Makes it across. Two, three. And then four, and he'll dump the icon. That means new turn. Uh, sorry, uh, then it's the uh, wizard, actually. One, two, three, four, jump across on a three plus. We do! So do we get ambushed? Nope. And we all make it to freedom, leaving through the back door here. So we each get D6 times 100 gold, plus the gold for these guys. So Hawk killed two orcs who are, I believe, 55. 110, uh, another 20 for our good friend Orlando. 110 plus 40 is 150 for Wolfric. And then clean and house, three, six, uh, eight times 55, oh my God. 140 plus 60 is 500 gold. Six times 100 for Wolfric. 600, you carry the lantern. Uh, then Astro, don't get greedy. Yeah, 100 for you, because you, you kill steal everybody with your awesome spell. Fox gonna get 600 as well. Not too shabby. Orlando, you're gonna get nothing really but this. 400. Well, no one has anything to level with. They, we don't have enough experience for anybody to do it. Hawk's at 4205, and I think he need, oh no, he could become a pugilist actually. You go to level three at 42.05. So we can go hit the hit the, the town, I guess, and see if we can make it in four weeks of travel. Week one, we're going for a town. It's a 54, which is Rockfall. As the warriors truck to, uh, through Dark Ravine and there's a dull rumbling, a few seconds later things have been blocked. You have to get a local um, laborers to clear your path, so it costs each of us D6 times 20. So week one's gonna cost, uh, that's gonna be five times 20 is 100, 80, 20, 102, 53, what could that be? Double back. Uh, after a moment, they recognize they're back at the dungeon. We have to start all over again. To week one, 63. Traveling minstrel, uh, roll a d6 in the following table to see what happens with research information. So a traveling minstrel joins the warriors for the rest of the journey. When they reach the settlement they're traveling to, uh, he begins to sing and convince that they'll earn them all free entry to the settlement. Roll a d6 on the following table when the warriors reach the destination. On a one, they're awful and they're forbidden to enter. On a two to five, no one's really impressed, but get some gold. And then on a six, everybody gets D6 times 10 gold. Two, 51, 51 will be uneventful week. Three, 64, a fall. Roll D6 for each warrior. The lowest score uh, adds two weeks to our journey. And we reach a settlement cost 30 to get their ankle healed. Oh, good. <laughs> So we're, at, we're on week three, but we're adding two more weeks. So now it's going to be three more rolls. This is going to be the longest walk out. Who rolls the lowest? Uh, it's going to be the elf. Breaks his ankle, so another minus 30. All right, so three more weeks to go, because this would have been week four. 56, which is an eventful week. Uh, so the two, two last weeks, 42 which is a flood. So a ferryman has to take us across the water for 20 gold each to reach our destination. Hopefully the final week, 55 is wagon train. Uh, they're heading our way and if we roll d6 times n, we save traveling time, but this is the last week, so it doesn't matter. The minstrel plays, what happens? All right, uh, so having rolled a one, we're refused entry to the settlement and have to go directly to our next adventure. <laughs> Fantastic. That's it. The minstrel sings badly, or maybe they get shifty with uh, with Astro, and we don't get to go by. I think we have to go right to our next adventure. So there we go, the end of the adventure. I mean, we all know it wasn't really the singing. It was something terrible Astro said during the singing, probably, that got us kicked out of the settlement. <laughs> I mean, it's not too big an ordeal because we have lots of gold and we're ready to rock and roll, hopefully, for the next adventure without too much heartache and suffering. So, see you for that in two weeks. Still in a mash. How are you? I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to so get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.